This is our special Anzac Day service. And Mr. Street's here to tell us a little bit more about Anzac Day. But my first question, Mr. Street, is who are the Anzacs? What do they do? Why do they get a day? Well, the Anzacs, Anzac stands for Australia New Zealand Army Corps. And it was the name given to Australian and New Zealand troops in the First World War. And uh, Anzac Day commemorates the first battle that Australians were involved in in the First World War. Uh, April 25, 1915, the Gallipoli campaign, uh, when Australians charged the shores of Turkey. Uh, we do Anzac Day to commemorate those who died in all Australian wars. So it's not just for the First World War, it's for all Australian wars. And we also use that time to reflect on the things that those sacrifices have given us. Mm. Uh, what types of things do you think of when you think about Anzac Day? I think of my great granddad. Uh, my great granddad fought in the Second World War and he lived right up until I was about 13, 14. Mm. And I remember sitting by his side, asking questions and learning. And I just remember wearing his badges on Anzac Day when I was in primary school. Mm. And you've used the word commemorate uh, a number of times. Some people mm. say celebrate Anzac Day. So which is it? Do we commemorate or celebrate? It's, it's an interesting dichotomy because I don't think that we do either or. Uh, we commemorate, we remember those who died, who sacrificed, who gave for our country. And it's not just soldiers either. We commemorate women who gave up their time. We commemorate children who suffered under the uh, difficulties of having their fathers away at war. Uh, but we also use this time to celebrate, to celebrate uh, what we've been given, this freedom, uh, which really comes into perspective after the Second World War when there was a genuine threat to our sovereignty. Mm. Can you tell us an Anzac Day story or an Anzac story? I'll give you two. Uh, one just demonstrates everything that is normal about Australia in 1914 and one that is all about the rippling effects of sacrifice. Mm. Uh, the first story is of John Monash, who was the child of German Jewish immigrants to Australia, who uh, was heavily invested in the Home Guard uh, as a young man and became an engineer seeking to build bridges and things like that during war efforts. Uh, he, through his efforts, through being an outsider, would eventually rise to become General of Australian Forces on the Western Front, and at the Battle of Harmel, uh, would use all the technologies that had failed British generals and use them to win a massive battle against German troops. So uh, that's a, a picture of Australian ingenuity, but it's also a, a part of the story, a part of the piece of the puzzle of Australia as a real migrant community. Yeah, it's, it's a vision and picture of what Australia was then and what it could be in the future, for sure. Mm. You mentioned you had a second story that you wanted to share. Yep, uh, my second story is about my great-grandfather uh, who enlisted from Wagga Wagga, a town that gave an enormous number of men to the First World War and the Second World War. And he joined quite late at about the age of 30, whereas most men were much younger when they joined. And he had a real sense of duty and passion for service. Uh, his wife came third in the HSC in, uh, in New South Wales when mm. she was in high school and had ambitions to do a law degree. But instead, uh, due to the pressures of her husband going to war, she became a kindergarten teacher and would be a kindergarten teacher for the rest of her life. Uh, she decided to sacrifice that law degree so that she could serve her family while her husband was away. Um, my great-grandfather uh, ended up landing, my great-grandfather ended up landing at Milne Bay and was a part of that first land victory against the Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
uh, he fractured his spine when a mortar landed right next to him and he would suffer enormous pain right through to his death in his late 80s when I was a teenager. And so Monash is a story of great potential and beauty in what Australia was and could be. My great grandfather's story is a story of great sacrifice, not just from him, but from all of the people around him. And you've mentioned this word sacrifice. I've seen photos, primary sources, you might describe them as a historian, photos of, of men having a great time and adventure. I saw one photo of, um, of the pyramids at Giza and a whole range of Australian soldiers perched up just like tourists, having a great time. I've seen others where they're playing cards and they're really enjoying the time. And then I've seen other photographs which are of great horror and suffering, which is right. I, I, I think they're both right. Um, we have, say, take my great-grandfather or his uh, father before him from Wagga Wagga. There is no opportunity for these people to go anywhere outside of Australia. And so they got to see Egypt, they got to see Europe, they got to spend time in Britain. If they were not born in Britain, they got to see it for themselves. Mm. Um, however, at the same time, those who were sent to the front, whether it was in Gallipoli or the Western Front or um, the Levant, it doesn't matter, they would have experienced great horrors. So yes, an adventure, yes, an amazing opportunity, and yes, uh, great pain that would wear on for decades and decades in the lives of these men. Thank you for sharing those, um, those stories with us, Mr. Street. I'm interested in our current context here at our Christian school, what does Anzac Day mean for us? We as Christians have our citizenship with Christ uh, and a country at the same time. And in Christ, we know that God is sovereign over all things and that we have a compassion and love for all of human life, regardless of the country it comes from. And so we can feel great mourning in the deaths of those who've died in war, uh, whether they're Australian or not. But we also have the advantage of hope that we can see that beyond our own deaths, beyond all death, is the hope of Christ. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful, isn't it? It's for me, uh, the experiences I consider some of the sufferings that you've mentioned that Christ knows what it is to suffer mm. and he's sat uh, uh, in, in a place of terrible suffering so that we might have life eternal. Mm. Um, we're actually going to take a moment now to listen to the last post. Uh, the last post is a piece of music that was played at the going down of the sun and then we're going to take a moment and we're going to hear a piece called Revali. And the Revali is a piece of music designed to wake up the soldiers. So take a moment and, and listen with us.
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We're really looking forward to seeing you guys this term, and we hope that it's a really fruitful term. As we've uh, reflected on this time at Anzac and this Anzac Day, I'd like to encourage you to take some time uh, to pause and to consider the stories that Mr. Street has told and perhaps the other stories that you've known before this and to take the time to really consider the freedoms that we have. And for me, particularly the freedom that is to preach and exalt God, uh, preach Christ. And, uh, and I praise his name that uh, we can sit here together uh, in our Christian school and have our faith in him. We'll see you next week.